Hello, I'm Sandy Weaver with Weaver Financial. Let's do the numbers. In a nutshell, in the first quarter, bonds lost a bit, but stocks had a stellar run. Inflation is proving sticky. The March Consumer Price Index rose 0.4% over the previous month and turned in a 3.5% yearly gain, up from February's 3.2% yearly gain. That's the wrong direction. That's a long way from the Federal Reserve's 2% target. The Fed is not dropping short-term interest rates yet. They're at 5.5%, and they indicate they may have to pause a while. The labor market continues to flourish. Consumers are spending. So far this year, U.S. large companies surged up 10%. Small companies paled in comparison, up 4%. Overseas companies paralleled that at 4%. Yields rose on short-term bonds, so the year-to-date return lost 1%. The market pros started this year expecting the Federal Reserve to cut short rates five or six times in 2024. Now the market is expecting only three rate cuts, perhaps fewer. Why? Our economy is producing jobs. The labor market has had two months of blowout figures for jobs created. While inflation remains stuck above target, the Federal Reserve is unlikely to consider lowering rates, which would boost the economy and perhaps exacerbate inflation further. How were we able to ratchet down our anticipation for lower interest rates and still keep stocks at elevated prices? Earnings expectations. The pros believe that companies will be able to thrive and produce good earnings growth. Even in our current environment with modestly high short-term interest rates, at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. Gross domestic product, GDP, for all of 2023 came in at two and a half percent. The expected slowdown in early 2024 from those higher interest rates failed to materialize. The Atlanta Fed Reserve's estimate is two and a half percent for the first quarter. Retail sales rose 0.6 percent in March. In March, 303,000 jobs were created. Wages again increased 4.1% year over year. The unemployment rate dropped to 3.8%, still quite low. Those participating in the workforce rose. These are positive economic indicators. Most pros no longer view a recession as likely. I'm sure you're well aware of war on two fronts, in Ukraine and in the Middle East. The big economic impact has been on our oil prices, now at 85 plus per barrel. Investors are concerned about the spread of war in both regions. It may be cold comfort, but remember that the markets react to an event if interest rates or earnings are likely to be impacted. What matters? Two things. Interest rates have reversed back up. The 10-year Treasury went from 4 to 4.4% now. Those are positive economic indicators, leading many to think the Fed will keep rates higher for longer. Earnings at large company in the S&P 500 were a robust 7% to 9% in the fourth quarter. Excuse me. First quarter earnings are projected at 3 to 5% and 9% for 2024. The stock market remains at above average valuations. Yet, if earnings grow as anticipated, some of that excessive optimism will be justified. Much depends on what the pros see ahead for the market. Interest rates may or may not need to start dropping to achieve healthy growth. If AI, artificial intelligence, produces a productivity boom and that comes in time, that may provide an earnings boost. Yet we all know there are danger signs on the horizon. We can count them. A pullback or even a correction wouldn't be a surprise. Inflation in Europe is still a bit higher than ours. Central banks there seem inclined to start lowering interest rates sooner than our Federal Reserve, but no action has been taken yet over there. Economic activity there is not as strong as ours, which may explain their central bank's desire to start lowering rates and to boost growth. Their stock market's returns were far less than our large cap indexes and more on par with U.S. small companies here. Although we don't invest a lot there, 
China is expected to lower their rates in order to boost their economy. A crystal ball would surely have given us an inside track last quarter, but barring that, we still diversify our investments over both large and small companies here and abroad. Bonds have been a disappointment because they're not contributing much to our return. We've diversified bonds a lot and have been able to mitigate or erase those negative returns. That's far better than the damage they gave us in 2022. We remain committed to an investment approach where we don't require a crystal ball, but rather focus on sound investments for the long term. Every dog has its day. Thank you for your interest. Please call or email if you want to dig in further. I am glad to pass on my readings, podcasts, and the other sources.